Welcome to Nationwide. Good to have you join us. We are reaching you live from Abuja, the, the capital city. I am Lydia Odije Ochi. Welcome to Nationwide. Nigeria and the Republic of Turkey have resolved to take the highly beneficial relations between the two countries in critical economic sectors to the next level. This came to light after the high-level engagement between President Mohamed Buhari and the visiting Turkish leader Recep Tayyip Erdogan in Abuja. CETAS correspondent Adamu Sambo reports that series of bilateral agreements and memoranda of understanding were signed. These are in the areas of energy, defense, industry, mining, and hydrocarbons. We have agreed that implementation is to commence immediately, aimed at strengthening this cordial relationship between Nigeria and Turkey. In the course of our discussions, we also reviewed the travel ban list based on the revised COVID-19 protocols and removed Turkey from Nigeria's travel ban list. Turkey has indeed achieved remarkable success in addressing the COVID-19 pandemic. Nigeria holds the position, the manufacturing position of the entire continent, and our trade volume between the two nations reached $2 billion last year. Thus, Nigeria became our most outstanding and the biggest trade partner in the Sub-Saharan Africa for the Republic of Turkey. But, however, we still believe that this level we have achieved is far from being adequate. We hope and pray that we will be expanding our trade volume up to $5 billion immediately. Meanwhile, Nigeria and Turkey have agreed to increase their volume of trade through the signing of more bilateral agreements. The decision was reached at the Nigeria-Turkey Business Forum held in Abuja as part of activities ahead of Turkey-Africa Summit to hold in Istanbul, Turkey. Benny Adams reports. As global economy looks to recover and fast from the effects of the pandemic on the economy, President Recep Erdogan of Turkey is on an African economic and business tour, meeting leaders and investors from Angola to Togo and now in Nigeria. Turkey shares its experiences and expertise in value addition initiatives in key areas like agriculture, energy, industry, and infrastructure. Trade between Turkey and Africa has grown from $5.5 billion in 2003 to more than $25.3 billion by 2020, in spite of the pandemic. And this engagement here is looking to explore emerging opportunities in agriculture, healthcare, ICT, and the financial services sector, in addition to opportunities in the new regional free trade zone, that is the AFCFTA. And on the flip side, Nigeria also has much to gain. The robust trade relations between Niger and Turkey have been mainly in the areas of oil and liquefied natural gas, LNG. As we encourage the trade in this sector by seeking further investment, we are working aggressively to diversify our economy, and we also seek to diversify the areas of focus of our, of our bilateral trade relationship. Nasima believes the projected increase in trade volume of 754 million to over 1 billion will easily be achieved by supporting the informal sector. 
At the end, deals will be signed with the hope that both economies recover stronger and better. From the Nigeria Talkie Business Forum in Abuja, I am Benny Adams. Thanks, Benny. Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu of Kebi State has commended the Nigerian Army for tackling insecurity. The governor said this when he received the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, who paid him a courtesy visit at the government house, Brin in Kebi. Usman Abdullahi Shehu reports. Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, while receiving the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, and his entourage, described the successes recorded by the Nigerian Armed Forces and other security operatives in the fight against banditry and other criminal activities as commendable, in spite of constraints. You have done a wonderful job of helping provide peace in Nigeria. Sometimes, especially in this age of social media, Anyone failing is amplified, but 99 successes are not mentioned. It can be frustrating to the body, but you sign off not to be judged by the social media, but you sign off to be judged by your conscience. The governor who acknowledged the Nigerian army support in protecting the lives and property of banditry troubled parts of the state also sympathized with the army on their members who paid the ultimate price in ensuring Nigeria remain one indivisible country. Earlier, the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, thanked the governor for the continued support accorded to the Nigerian army. We must appreciate and thank you for everything you are doing. And now urge you, as always, not to relent. I know you will not, uh, even when we have not asked, you have provided. Highlight of the visit was presentation of pledge to the governor as part of recognition towards promotion of peace and security, as well as the inspection of the Kebbi State fabricated armored personnel carriers vehicles. Suman Abdullahi Shehu, NTA News. The new commissioner of police, Bayelsa State Command, Benjamin Okolo, has promised to synergize with members of community and other relevant stakeholders for effective policing of the state. He spoke at a meeting meeting with top officers of the command shortly after assumption of duty at the state police headquarters in Yenagoa. Imo Etimudo reports. The new commissioner of police, Bayelsa State, Benjamin Okolo, acknowledged security challenges in Bayelsa State and promise to tackle them with professionalism. I'm aware that the state is being confronted with threats of kidnap, cultism, and some other heinous crimes. To continue to deal with these security challenges, we will synergize with all stakeholders in the command. Particularly, we will take advantage of community engagement of the community policing initiative. We deal with cases of incivility to members of the public, extortion, and all forms of discreditable conduct. These professional infractions utterly negate our policing values, just as they negatively impact on our drive to smoothen our partnership with citizens. The new police boss is the 34th Commissioner of Police posted to Bayelsa State Command. From the headquarters of the Nigerian Police Bayelsa State Command, Imo Etimodo, NTA News. A handful of persons in Abuja embarked on a rally to mark one year anniversary of the NSAS protests. The group had converged at the Unity Fountain, unhindered by security agencies. Moments later, an attempted breaching of traffic and security as they marched towards National Assembly, necessitating security task force operation to intervene at the Federal Ministry of Justice. Meanwhile, another group held a similar procession at the Unity Fountain to decry what they described as a politically sponsored attempt to blackmail the federal government. Meanwhile, the heavy presence of security personnel at the Lekki toll gate forestalled a scenario, scenario that should have resulted in a total lockdown of the Lekki Axis. We shall go to that when we go to our Lagos Network Center. 
Well, meanwhile, the NSAS one-year anniversary rally was staged peacefully in most parts of the country with the presence of security personnel to prevent hoodlums from hijacking it. Francis Form co compiled reports from across the country. From Akure, the Ondo state capital, Doris Olumoko reports that some youths are commemorating the one-year anniversary of NSAS protest in a peaceful manner. Why do we want justice? Why do we want justice? They are working on that, but from whichever way that the government wants to do it, because these are legitimate demands. Similarly, Simon Asha reports from Yola, the Adama state capital, that the NSAS one-year anniversary rally was staged peacefully with calls for more jobs creation. We need a flourishing nation. We need a nation with job employment. In Benin, Joy Egbo reports that the NSAS rally was also held in the state. Officer that was found wanting to be persecuted. Those that I was recommended for compensation should be, should be given compensation. From AKT, IODG Ogun Shakin reports that the situation was calm in the state with security men on ground to ensure orderliness. Franks is from NTA News. For more on the NSAS uh, rally, let's go to Lagos, which is our first spot of call, and Ruth will be guiding us. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Lydia. The proactive measures put in place by security operatives to forestall breakdown of law and order by the NSAS youth protesters at the Lekki toll gate resulted in a peaceful memorial remembrance. Commissioner of Police, Lagos State, Akim Odumosu, described the presence of security operatives at the toll gate as a means to checkmate violence or possible hijack of the protest. Abolade Salami reports. Sequel to the violence and wanton destruction that emanated from the NSAS protest in October 2020, security operators, in a proactive approach, besieged the lucky toll gate ahead of the planned memorial celebration. In trickles, they appear in the motorcade with Nigerian flag hoisted on their cars while blowing the horns to celebrate the day. While the police watched with keen interest to avoid any form of gathering or infiltration of any sort from people with an ulterior motive, the crowd increased and some suspected hoodlums tried to take advantage but were prevented by the police. We want to prevent that nobody should take law to his own hands and disturb the peace of Lagos. And the, the state is safe, is peaceful. Must we now go and create problems on our own? So that's just what you're after. Everybody that's in Lagos now, the rest of us, police is ready to protect their life and property. We are going to be here until normalcy is restored. It's restored already. Locals are moving. Nobody's being attacked now. Nobody's being stopped now. It's restored. They will still remain. At least to make sure that everything goes. And all, till all of you go. The peaceful protest brought together some notable Nollywood actors, civil rights activists, and artists to lend their voices to support the youth. But when you protest, do not uh, impeach on the rights of other people. Do not injure other people. Do not harass other people. Do not frustrate other people. And it's doable. We don't want it to turn ugly. We want it to, to move. And that's why I've been going front to speak to them that they should be moving. I mean, it is a very simple thing. The police has however dispersed the protests and no mercy has since returned. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. Ending the war against insurgency and other forms of crimes in the country can be achieved faster than envisaged with the effective deployment and utilization of mapping and geospatial technology. This key players at the 42nd International Workshop of the Nigerian Cartographic Association in Lagos said will enhance imagery analysis and interpretation. Michael Olale reports. During the old Amendiva period, there is no conquest without a well-detailed map offering guidance and precision. Although a lot has involved accumulating to this era, but the place of map and geospatial technology still remain indispensable to unearth in hidden treasures. This forum is therefore advocating effective mapping for enhanced national security, managing the COVID-19 pandemic and offering direction for good governance. Stakeholders here 
want the country to complement the use of GPS and satellite imaging with well-structured mapping to track activities of battery, kidnapping, and monitor vaccine distribution. Thus, a lot of maps to produce that can show where the killers, the kidnappers, the bandits have come from. What we are saying is enhance the production of distance and also create your special intelligent communities so that people will also you pick maps, anybody can pick map and read it and also use it for effective uh, development in, in areas. On its part, the armed forces is strengthening its various geospatial centers to intensify its aggressive combat against insurgency. These centers are all fully operational with the capabilities to carry out the production of maps, imagery analysis, imagery interpretation and signal intelligence. The Nigerian Cartographic Association convened this workshop to re-echo the importance of practitioners to national development. Unless we use the right caliber of trained professionals, we may not be able to do so much in actually achieving geospatial transformation. Key players in the industry were specially recognized for their contributions, including Professor Lanyin Kabalogun in Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NT News. We pause here for a break. Nationwide continues with Frama in Jos. Federal government through NPHCDA commenced phase two vaccination of all persons 18 years and above with safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines approved by WHO and certified by NAFDAQ. Special arrangement has been made for staff, their dependents and retirees of ministries, departments and agencies of government, private corporate organizations and non-governmental organizations. To benefit from this special arrangement, visit www.nphcda.gov.ng forward slash corporate vaccination forward slash to obtain, fill and submit the Google form. NPHCDA will contact you within 48 hours. Protect yourself, your family and your workplace against COVID-19. COVID-19 vaccines are free, safe, and effective. For further inquiries, call 0700-220-1122 or send a mail to covid19.vaccination at nphcda.gov.ng. This message is from the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. The Intra-African Trade Fair, IATF, is a key event that provides an unrivaled platform for African buyers and sellers to meet and explore business opportunities from the African continent and beyond. This year, Nigeria will again take part in the Intra-Africa Trade Fair in Durban, South Africa, from the 15th to the 21st of November, 2021. This event invites Nigerian businesses to participate and showcase the best of our manufacturing talents, whether in the production of goods, cosmetics, fashion, agriculture, or digital technology. Grab the perfect opportunity to make valuable connections that will take your business to the next level. Register now to participate and showcase the best products Nigeria has to offer. Log on to www.nepc.gov.ng and let's showcase the best of Nigeria at this year's IATF event in Durban, South Africa from the 15th to 21st November 2021. Africa is talking business. Be part of it. Two entertaining sides will be looking to get the results when they meet at Ellen Road. Who will come out on top? This Saturday, it's Leeds United versus Wolverhampton Wanderers on the Premier League line. Showing on the network service of the NTA, Silverbird Television and Sporty.com from 2.30pm. The Premier League live is brought to you by Baba Ijebu and powered by Integral. <laughs> This is Nationwide, and welcome to JOS. No nation, no matter how wealthy, can achieve sustainable development without peace. It's against this backdrop that the Bongwem JOS, Dad Jacob Yangbuba, is calling on plateau citizens to work towards peace in the land for meaningful development. Caleb Gochin reports that the royal father was speaking in JOS during his 70th birthday celebrations. The Bongom, while addressing the crowd that came to celebrate with him, 
expressed worries about the conduct of some people which has continued to militate against the achievement of peace in some parts of the country. He challenged everyone to embark on self-evaluation and to make amends for the sake of humanity and the land. All those who believe in God Almighty to step back and assess yourself because nobody is going to restore peace on the plateau or in Nigeria unless we ourselves desire peace. We are going to establish a dialogue and create a conversation. And those conversations will now allow us to manage the system. I will call on the government, traditional rulers, and all in authority to always insist on law and order according to the constitution of the land. Believe me, this is done. Peace is achievable. It is in demonstration of the Bongom's commitment to peace and unity of the people that he honored some personalities including the Director General of the NTA, Malam Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, with chieftaincy titles. We continue to work assiduously to protect and protect the tradition and culture of the kingdom in particular and plato faith as well. They all prayed for an end to all forms of insecurity. In Jos Caleb Gochin, NTA News. Nigerian Institute of Public Relations says it is committed to building credible and dynamic professional institution that is responsive to Nigeria's needs. This was at a meeting in JOS on the upcoming North Central Citizen Summit for National Integration, Peace and Security. One of the objectives of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations is to establish prescribe and ensure the observance of high standards of professional and ethical practice in the country. As part of its commitment to national integration, peace and security, NIPR is brainstorming for the successful hosting of North Central Citizen Summit in JAWS. Um, the zonal summits are taking place in the sixth geopolitical zone and then there's going to be a seventh summit in the diaspora. But the overall summit for the nation will also take place at the end of November. The reason is that we want to foster and forge common understanding about national security issues, about peace building and peaceful coexistence and investments in peace, and also to adopt a common position regarding national integration because we believe in the unity and the indivisibility of the country. The NIPR adopts the position that it is possible to have a conversation about the various differences and resolve them. The summit, which is expected to drop participants from the North Central, will address ways of restoring sustainable peace in the zone and the country. And that's our contribution from Joss. Nationwide continues with Lydia in Abuja. Thank you, Frama. Following the impact of global economic performance that has forced many countries to look inward, Nigeria has developed strategies for food sufficiency and greater market prospects for commodities with comparative value. Aubakar Usman Akwanga reports that this informed the basis of analysis for the utilization of the Nigeria agricultural potential as the 2021 World Food Day comes into focus on NTA's Tuesday Live program. The narrative of Nigeria's agricultural history is better told in a fashion that explains the fall of the sector and the rise of the crude oil as mainstay of the Nigerian economy. Now, as the world marks 2021 Food Day, attention for paradigm shift is on massive production for sustainability, export value, and wealth creation. While giving kudos to this government for bringing ag agriculture to the front burner, and indeed the ban, as the Honorable said, on certain uh, food items that we could produce in Nigeria, is a welcome development, and we must give it to President Mohamed Buhari for that singular action. Stakeholders say Nigeria's renewed vigor in shaping the future of agriculture through positive initiatives is an investment that is worth the pains. We recently approved mechanization program under the Federal Ministry of Agri and under the Green Imperative program. 
which is basically to sustain agricultural production in the country. It is important that uh, the farmers are taught to embrace good ag agricultural practice, uh, that they should not put uh, chemicals that will interfere with the quality of the food. As hopes remain high for the potential of the agricultural sector to once again drive the economy, key players say it is only critical for citizens to embrace a new dawn of revolution that is making greater impact in the sector. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. An next report from Oshobo says no fewer than 180,000 less privileged persons in Oshun have benefited from the state food support scheme, an initiative of the Governor Oyetola-led administration. Currently, 5 kg bags of wheat are being distributed to another 30,000 vulnerables across the state for the October edition. Correspondent Joshua Ogunjide reports. It will be a call that Governor Boye on the 4th of April 2021 flagged off the Oshun Food Support Scheme. The Ocean Food Support Scheme initially aimed at mitigating the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic on the less privileged has now come to stay, as 5 kg bag of wheat is being distributed to 30,000 vulnerables across the 30 local government and an area office of the state. And the generality of the people that are receiving are happy and delighted. And then what is most important is the distribution strategy. The committee will ensure that you can't take twice. We have to ensure that expanding it will require the necessary intervention so that it can have universal acceptability. The distribution is being unclogged via a social register as prescribed by the World Bank. Aside the Goiga Oitala led administration's successes in health, infrastructure, education, security, and workers' welfare, which are largely due to his financial ingenuity. Part of Mr. Governor's commitment to also ensure that he also impacts every sector of the society. On our own part and for the beneficiaries, even from the videos and feedbacks of those that are given the goods, you will see that there is a lot of appreciation. This social intervention program has been executed in collaboration with the World Bank. In Oshobo, Joshua Okuchide, NG News. And now to politics. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, has commenced a screening of aspirants vying for various national offices in the 2021 National Convention of the People's Democratic Party. The screening subcommittee is chaired by former Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Mohamed Bello Adoke, SEN. He promised the committee's fairness to all aspirants, stressing that Members comprise committed and loyal party members set to discharge their assignment without fear or favor. Other members of the subcommittee include former Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Austin Opara, former Minister of Information, Professor Jerry Ghana, amongst others. Correspondent Timo Yusu reports that Eitayo Jegede, SAN, is secretary of the subcommittee. President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has congratulated former head of state, Yakubu Gowon, on the occasion of his 87th birthday. In a statement by the special advisor to the president of the Senate on media and publicity, Ola Awoniyi, Senator Lawan noted that Governor General Gowon played a great role in keeping Nigeria one and secured his place in the history of the country as a gentleman officer forthright leader and quintessential patriot which has continued decades after his retirement. The Senate President salutes the General in what he describes as a long life and wishes him many more years in good health. What kind of, of leadership should Nigeria have? This is a question as old as the amalgamation itself, but given current trends, it has become even more pertinent sure that we are emotionally and uh, 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 economically ready to practice the type of presidential system we are practicing. Because uh, the situation where people are, uh, everybody was talking about money, 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 money. And most of them are, are people who, who have nothing else to do. They, they, these are, they tend to be professional politicians, very desperate, and they do desperate things. 
Former President of the Senate, Ken Namani, bears his mind on leadership, governance, and his new book, Standing Strong. In most states, the House of Assembly is a department in government house. Where do they pass the budget? Where do they debate it? How? Do they have the courage to do that? If they are sent away, what will they be, be eating? You remember, it's time for us to chop. Watch out for the full interview on Friday at 10.30 p.m. on the NTA network. And now to health matters. Every 20th October is observed as World Osteoporosis Day to raise global awareness on the disease that weakens the bones. It is reported that osteoporosis is a silent bone disease which often does not have symptoms in the early stage. More worrisome is global statistics that one in three women and one in five men aged 50 years and above will suffer an osteoporotic fracture. To throw more light on the subject matter we have in the studio, Dr. Chris Otabo, a medical practitioner. You're welcome to Nationwide. Thank you for having me. Lydia. Now tell us how much awareness do Nigerians have on this disease? Thank you. Generally, the awareness is very poor. Even in advanced countries, the awareness level is not that high. And that's why the world is celebrating the World Osteoporosis Day. Osteoporosis is derived from two words. Okay. Osteo, from Latin, which means bone, and porosis, which means porous. So, okay. in, this, in essence, porous bone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the maximum age uh, bone strength is attained at the age of 30 years. Okay. Yes. Anything from then, the bone strength begins to wane. Okay. And it, it, it goes down until uh, old age. Okay. Yes. So the problem with osteoporosis is that the bone becomes uh, prone to fractures. Okay. And um, like you said in your introduction, mm -hmm. there are uh, two peaks for post-menopausal women, okay. the rate of bone loss is, is faster than the rate at which the bone is formed. And just a little fall will cause a fracture, especially around the wrist, the colless fracture, and around the hip. Okay. And it, it can have very severe consequences. Millions of people die every year as a result of, uh, we call it insufficiency fracture, okay. which is fracture from weak Bones. With bones. Yes. Okay. Now, how much awareness do Nigerians have about this disease and how best can we prevent osteoporosis? Well, to prevent osteoporosis, we need to understand how it, how it comes about. Okay. Yeah, so there's a, there's a, um, there are two mechanisms going on at the same time, mm -hmm. bone loss and bone Renewal. formation. Okay. Yes. There, there are two types of osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. The primary osteoporosis, which occurs in women after menopause, because estrogen, the female hormones, mm -hmm. help to protect the bone. Once a woman gets into menopause, mm -hmm. their bone strength rapidly uh, drops okay. because there's no protection for it. Mm -hmm. Then for men f above 50 and, you know, and older, they also have progressive weakness of the bones. Okay. That's for the primary osteoporosis. Okay. So the way to, protect, to prevent that mm -hmm. is um, for women, some people, we have to go to check okay. to know the state of our bones at any time. And then we also have to do exercise. Mm -hmm. Exercise helps to strengthen the bone. Okay. And then we, ha we have to eat right. Mm -hmm. We have to avoid alcohol intake mm -hmm. and tobacco. But in the course of exercise, you, you can also fall and break a bone. Yes. Yeah, well, it's not a common phenomenon. It's only when the osteoporosis has become advanced that's when fracture can occur from exercise and except very vigorous okay. exercise. Yes, but uh, generally exercise is protective. And okay. then diet. The reason why the elderly would have weak bones is because they don't get enough calcium uh, from their intestine. Okay, so how can we get calcium into our bones? What do we eat? Yes. to make our bones stronger. Yeah, it's not just about what we eat. That's just one aspect of mm -hmm. it. Okay, so you also have to prevent loss of calcium from the mm -hmm. bone because there's a there's inflow and outflow of calcium. Okay. If the heart needs more calcium, mm -hmm. the body will borrow from the bone. Okay. And that makes the bone weak. Weak. Yes, so mm -hmm. uh, to eat right dairy products like milk, 
mm. and uh, cheese mm. and bony fish, okay. leafy vegetables. They are very good source of calcium. But mm. for people, elderly people who cannot eat much, then they can get dietary, dietary supplements of these okay. um, vitamins. Thank you so much for educating us on osteoporosis as we mark the day. Thank, Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having We've me. We've been talking to Dr. Chris Otabo on osteoporosis. Thank you for, for joining us. Let's now go to Port Harcourt. Dibabari is standing by with more reports on Nationwide. It's over to you. Welcome to Port Harcourt. Experts in the aviation sector have commended interagency swift response towards a mock aeronautical search and rescue operation conducted by the Nigerian Airspace Management Agency to certify the Port Harcourt International Airport for further international operations. Robinson Deratide has the details. It was a mock operation by the Nigeria Airspace Management Agency to test the response of stakeholders towards aircraft disaster with the aim of measuring the standard of Port Harcourt International Airport for international aircraft operations. A Kilimanjaro aircraft with 25 members on board minus three crew from Duala, Cameroon crashed few kilometers to the Port Harcourt Airport following an alarm raised by a farmer a combined rescue team of military, paramilitary, and emergency response agencies were able to rescue a total of 10 people. Oh no, I can't do it, but I know my chest is burning me. It's heavy on my chest. And I... Before I came here, my watch officer was already here. No, and as soon as I got here, I realized that you know, he has done a good job. The fire that was initially well alight you know, had already been put off, almost put off. The cause of the accident was as a result of fire on starboard engine, resulting to emergency landing, while the Accident Investigation Bureau is on ground for further probing. From the pilot, he had fire on one of his engines. He could not make it to land. The next thing he declared may be, but he could not make a safe landing. The aircraft busted into flames as soon as the aircraft landed. I'm happy because the aim is for us to improve on what we have on ground. Even you, NTA, I saw you people on time from before morning, before even the, the crash uh, was declared. So I was impressed. The rescue team is an emergency response mechanism aimed at addressing subsequent emergency threats at the airport at any time. In Port Harcourt, Robinson Deratede, NTA News. That was a mock demonstration by a rescue team. The use of hand sanitizers have become common with the emergence of the deadly coronavirus pandemic. While health authorities recommend using hand sanitizers with alcohol content of about 60 to 95 percent to weed off germs, compliance with the use of this hygiene product is often compromised by some Nigerians. Chidebiroya interfaced with some medical experts on the efficacy of hand sanitizers. Following the outbreak of COVID-19, health authorities have overly emphasized the importance of imbibing good hygiene habits, such as the constant use of alcohol-based hand sanitizers to wage war against the spread of the virus. How often do you sanitize? Mm, always, because we are taught to move about it. It's... One of the reasons why people are um, relaxed is with the fact that maybe I think there, there is a vaccine now which um, could help. But I think um, that is notwithstanding, people should be more careful. Medical experts identified two types of hand sanitizers to include alcohol-based and alcohol-free products. They explained that sanitizers with less than 60% of alcohol are found to be less effective at killing bacteria and may only reduce the growth of germs. Uh, alcohol based hand sanitizer, they approve WHO approved uh, content for hand sanitizer. One, it is very effective, and then secondly, it's pro spectrum, and then thirdly, it is very cheap, unlike many other uh, chemical products that can kill germs. Of great concern is the production of these hand disinfectants by non drug manufacturers, which has increased the production of fake and substandard products in the open markets. Uh, what I advocate for people, uh, especially in large organizations, is to buy a simple alcohol meter like this, which where you just drop the alcohol here, 
And then when you look through this window, you see the percentage concentration of the alcohol. Many of the ones that have had cost to checks are like 50%, 54%. Whereas what is needed for efficacy is about 75%. While using hand sanitizer is a smart way to slowly prevent the spread of viruses, experts maintain that washing hands thoroughly with soap and running water is more effective than using hand sanitizers. In Portacot, Chidia Bere Onya, NTA News. And as our beat from Portacot is back to lead for the rest of the news. Good evening. When you think about hospitality and affordable luxury away from home, then you talk about Sharon Ultimate Hotels, a secured and serene environment that offers kingly services such as 24-hour room service, impeccable security with CCTV surveillance, parking lot, free Wi-Fi internet service, free complimentary breakfast, restaurants that offers continental and local dishes, well-equipped fitness center with instructors, swimming pool, 350 capacity multipurpose hall, laundry service, pastry corner, mini mat, and our suites are breathtaking. For reservation, locate us at Plot 1710, Tafawa Balewa Way, Area 3, Garikia, Buja. Charan Ultimate Hotels, the ultimate place. The broadcast media ecosystem is dynamic and requires continuous training for practitioners to perform optimally. NTA TV College JOS invites relevant officers to the following specially packaged training programs. Archival Management System in the Broadcast Media, date 11th October to 29th October 2021, three weeks. Intermediate Presentation Techniques, date 11th October to 22nd October 2021, two weeks. Digital Satellite, Microwave and RF Technologies, date 11th October to 15th October 2021, one week. Advanced Broadcast Accounting and Auditing. Date, 25th October to 5th November 2021, two weeks. Photojournalism and Photography. Date, 8th November to 26th November 2021, three weeks. Transmitter Operation and Maintenance. Date, 1st November to 5th November 2021, one week. The course fee for the three-week course is 130,000 Naira per participant, while the fee for the two-week course and the one-week engineering courses is 100,000 Naira only per participant, accommodation inclusive. The venue for all courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA TV College near Old Government House, Rayfield, Jaws. For more information, please call 0803-314-4383 or 0806-980-9807. NTA TV College, Jaws, training you to be the best you want to be. Thank you for staying with us. We now go over to Kaduna where Amina is standing by with more stories on Nationwide. Hello Amina. Thanks Lydia. Welcome to Kaduna. National Drug Law Enforcement Agency in Jigao State has launched what it calls total war against drug abuse and its dealers as it succeeds in arresting more than 130 suspected users of illicit drugs. Awal Mohammed Kazori reports that among the suspects are two traditional title holders. The operation, which lasted for two weeks, dislodged various joints identified as black spots used by drug users across the 27 local government areas of the state. Parading the suspects, the NDLEA commander in the state, Mariam Gambosani, stressed the need for interagency collaboration between security outfits to check challenges of drug abuse and insecurity in the country. In these 134 suspects, 
132 are male, two female. Within them, we have uh, two traditional tattoo holders, two public servants, with a lot of civil servants involved. We have about 25 students of various institutions. Total weight of psychotropic substances is 2.559 kilogram. A cumulative grand total of 5.974 kilograms of various drugs. The suspects, who are mostly users of illicit drugs and substances, are now under rehabilitation, while dealers among them will be charged to court for prosecution. From Dus A, Awal Muhammad Kazaure, NTA News. To consolidate on the peaceful coexistence among various groups in Kaduna, the state government has inaugurated a religious preaching regulatory committee headed by Zizo Emirate Council member Manir Jafaru. The committee is to ensure that religious leaders avoid hate and incisive comments in sermons or while preaching. Suleiman Ablairugachukun reports. At different times in the past, Kaduna State experienced ethno-religious crisis, which led to loss of lives and property. To check any reoccurrence, the state government came up with a law regulating preaching. The inauguration of this committee, which is meant to monitor and regulate preachings in worship centers, is to ensure that the message of God is delivered to believers without generating hatred or incisive comments. The committee comprises of Islamic scholars, clergy, and traditional rulers will ensure that the state guidelines on preachings as contained in the religious preaching law 2016 as amended are complied with. Religion is a relationship with God, not a bargaining tool for economic or political favors, and certainly not an excuse for murder, arson, destruction of property and other violent crimes against people who worship and pray differently. As pioneer members of this religious preaching regulatory council, you have an arduous but most important task of ensuring that those that are leaders of faith, those that preach, do not set our people against each other. The committee is expected to bring together religious leaders for common understanding of matters affecting various groups and faiths. Suleiman Abdullah Hirvachkung, NTA News. And that's it from here. It's back to Lydia in Abuja. Many thanks, Amina. Setting standard for public procurement to the development of Nigeria is a top priority for the Association of Public Procurement Practitioners of Nigeria. And to achieve this, the agency is seeking partnerships with relevant organizations. Abdul Malik Hassan reports that the latest is with the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA. A big handshake between Executive Director Engineering of the NTA, Stephen Opanaji, and the President Association of Public Procurement Practitioners of Nigeria, MM James, signaling the beginning of a healthy relationship. An agreement has been reached, and NTA is ready to support APON in its quest to set standard in the country's procurement sector. Well, when we talk about development, we talk about good procurement. If you do good procurement, you cannot have this building last. So as practitioners, we now discover it's best for us to come together as a people, as colleagues, to professionalize this profession. So we are calling on everybody, all our partners, like the ATA, we are here to sell this idea to you. Major aim is to put in the standard, which invariably will be of international best practice. We are ready and ever ready, willing to partner with you about procurement procedures and processes. The visit is to address lack of transparency, as well disseminate adequate information in addressing lapses in public procurement, and success seems to be gaining ground here. Abdul Malik Hassan. NTA News. Environmentalists and policymakers in the environment sector are in Abuja at the instance of the Federal Ministry of Environment to chart pathways for the sector in line with key priority areas of the current administration. Onungie Fineface was there. 
The 15th National Council on Environment is focused on appraising the emerging challenges and the opportunities in the environment sector. There's a call for actions towards the environment that Nigeria wants. We should not lose sight of the emerging opportunities, which must be driven through the following actions. Designing and implementing standard operating procedures, providing technical support for environmental remediation projects, designing project, pro programs and processes for a cleaner environment, ensure sustainable, sustainable environmental planning and the conservation of our natural resources. As the meeting of environmental experts and policy makers, as technical session collapsed into thematic clusters to deliberate on submitted council memos from previous working group meetings. It will also feature a technical meeting of the permanent secretaries, presentation and deliberation on the 15th NCE technical report to permanent secretaries by chairman of technical committee. The session will close with a communique addressing critical environmental issues, especially those leading to Nigeria's commitment to Paris Agreement ahead of COP26 in Glasgow. In Abuja, Onengie, Fine Face, NTA News. The National Emergency Management Agency has distributed farming inputs to more than 7,000 farmers in Zamfara State under the Federal Government Emergency Agricultural Intervention Fund. The intervention is part of measures to avert food crisis as a result of insecurity and the flood that wreaked havoc on some farming communities across the state. Jamili Ibrahim reports. Flood disaster experienced last year in some local government areas of Zamfara State, which submerged many farmlands, coupled with the prevailing security challenges, calls for decisive and urgent measures to avert imminent food crises in the state. The provision of farm inputs to the affected farmers by the federal government through the Emergency Agricultural Intervention Fund is therefore a step in the right direction. The farmers, 7,146 7, of them spread across various all the 40 local governments of the first state are going to enjoy or benefit from this farm input. Zamfara State Commissioner for Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development received the intervention on behalf of the state government. We already have the list of those that are eligible to benefit from it. Um, we're going across the 14 LGAs. The beneficiaries thanked the federal government for the intervention and they pledged to make good use of the farm inputs. We are really appreciated with this and also we are praying to the government. We are full of gratitude to the government for this wonderful intervention. The farm inputs include fertilizer, water pumping machines, sprayers, insecticides and improved seeds and the beneficiaries are expected to fully engage in the 2021 dry season farming in Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim. NTA News. Next is Spots with Kene Emagodike. All is set for the 2021 National Handball League, which throws off on Thursday at the Package Bay section of Moshud Abiola National Stadium, Abuja. The competition, which runs until November 3, 2021, has 12 male teams 